Okay, so previous video we talked about tactical and EDC. Now we're going to talk about gentleman line, gentleman class of knives. The gentleman class of knives is the class of knives that I personally carry when I don't expect to be doing any work with a knife, but I still want to have one. And it's the one you carry if you go into a social environment where you might be, you, you don't expect it to carry a knife. So carrying something that's small and or classically accepted knife, it's, uh, it's, it's more suitable. So what we're looking at is uh, right off the bat, we're talking about Victorian knives. Uh, it is a very classical knife, everybody knows about it, it's very well accepted. Um, as a sort of, like, can I say, as a general perception, as a public perception, very well accepted. And also in terms of legalities, uh, I do think this knife is, or the blade is under three inches, and it's a slip joint. It's very well associated with gentleman knives, and it's also a not, uh, it's not a fighting knife, and in terms of legalities and police forces across the cities in, uh, you know, the Western world, they will accept this more than, uh, a, uh, a folding uh, lockable blade. So legally speaking, very favorable. Um, I don't know what the names are anymore because I'm not super stoked on them. I just uh, I have very good memories on these knives, but not the names. If you know, Spartan. Okay, this is a Spartan Victorinox in black scales. Um, first knife of the Spider Quest. I just, I, I really liked it a lot. Um, yeah, there's not much to say, but. It was the first uh, Swiss Army knife you bought for yourself? Yes, I thought the black looked kind of cooler, so I went for tactical black in uh, Victorian Ox. How old is it? Uh, it's a few years, I have it since Toronto for sure, so it's like 3-4 years already. Uh, it has big blade, small blade, uh, corkscrew, the usual stuff, you guys kind of know about it. So anyway, so I have this one. Um, second one, I figured I'm moving out to the BC that's a mountains and forests, I want to have a knife with a saw. So I got the uh, camper, perhaps? Camper, camper or hiker? One of those two. Uh, so this one has a saw, which is a plus, and it has a Phillips driver, which is a plus, instead of a corkscrew for wine bottles, which I don't use anyways. Uh, so that is the difference of this model over this one. Saw and Phillips screwdriver. Uh, both successfully used, both the very appreciated to have over this one. The saw, it's a very important tool the moment that you are considering working with wood. It's good for wood, it's good for fire starter as well. So, very happy with that. That is a great saw. Um, Blade Lock gave me um, that knife with the corkscrew, <laughs> not, not the uh, really? Phillips driver. No, you have the Phillips driver. No, I don't. I have the corkscrew. He, okay. must have, he must have known that I'm a wine drinker. <laughs> I, I think that was part of the plan. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, really cool knife. The saw is amazing. Uh, you can do like another comparison between like a Leatherman saw and yeah. that saw. And it's like the direction of the teeth. I think that one goes both ways. Yeah, this uh, is a 50-50. will cut equally well both in pushing and pulling. The Leathermans are more of a pull saw. They, they are oriented in a way that well, they do most of their cutting when you pull it which has its advantages and uh, disadvantages, but this cuts both ways, so. I like that saw better. Okay, so successful saw, the only issue, it doesn't lock. No. Uh, you don't need it when you use it as a saw, but if you use it as a fire star striker, meaning that you have it open, but you actually want to use the back of it, you can accidentally cause it to close on you. If you use it at the bottom, you're fine. If you use it at the top, <coughs> you will get a close on you. Been there, done that. Okay, there you go. <laughs> um, actually, I you can even get caught by a saw, like blood cuts. So it's kind of odd to me. I don't expect being caught by a saw. Anyway, moving on. Next, Victorinox. Um, digital camouflage again. Digital, digital seems to be a topic. <laughs> um, this is the one with the scissors, which, by the way, very successful. I mean, look how big the scissors are for. A Victorinox, uh, you know, knife. I, I, I'm very happy with the scissors. Um, everything else is standard knives, bottle openers, all that stuff. But I'm really, I, I really just enjoy the, uh, the the camouflage. It's I'm I'm scared to use it because I don't want to get it scratched. But uh, it's just it's pleasant to look at it. I think. Do you want to say anything? This is from Mexico, right? Yeah, it's from Mexico. That's absolutely right. 
Um, I, I made a video about the Mexican knife store and every time I'm in Mexico, I seem to buy myself a Victorinox, at least one. Um, I bought myself a Spartan in black in, when I was in Mexico City for Christmas one year. And uh, I bought this in Guadalajara where my wife is from. Mm -hmm. And uh, such, I don't know, I was just so happy to see camouflage. Um, <laughs> like, like, like you were saying, it's like I just love camouflage. It's not a militaristic thing, it's just, it reminds me of being in nature. They're all organic, natural colors. Um, and, I don't know, it reminds me of a lot of happy memories, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think that the Victorianists are sort of allowed in Mexico over fixed blades or over locking blades? Is that the more common, commonly acceptable knife or...? Yeah, uh, I think Victorianists are like a global thing. Um, they're perceived as tools or collectibles or something and uh, there's no violence associated with Victorinoxes. I guarantee you like these have not been used in like many assaults over the years Yeah. Um, because if you do it'll fold on you. Yeah. Um, you can buy them everywhere. Uh, they're a universal recognizable yes. thing, right? Especially the red one. Uh, everybody knows a red Victorinox, MacGyver's mm -hmm. favorite tool. Um, you can go black or camouflage a little bit, kind of get away from that friendliness a little bit, but it's still it is still a Victorian house, very well known and very well appreciated. Um, I have actually found an odd Victorian house. Um, I don't know what's it called because I got it at the flea market. It's super thin. It only has long blade and small blade, which I, I really like, I mean I have to sharpen them because it's a used knife. I got this for four dollars at the flea market. Uh, I'm sure there's a name for it, but just let's compare it to a regular one. Let's get closer and closer and closer and closer. It's only one level. Yes, look at the difference between the two. I mean, this guy is so much easier to carry. This is an aluminum frame, anodized aluminum of some sort. This is the full plastic scales and a triple decker. This is a single deck. So, super EDC right here, like super portable. Um, it's also a little bit odd because it's, it's harder to, to sort of uh, handle it because of the thinness. Like this will fill your hand very well. This instead, you kind of have to be a little bit more thoughtful about how you use it. But I do like it. Um, that's the last Victorinox of my gentleman collection. It's, I'm assuming that's like an aluminum handle. It is an aluminum handle, but it's not the typical Alox that people talk on the YouTube. Well, it's, it's something a bit more unique, I guess. I, I'm not sure where it's coming from, but I think it's an original and yeah, it's a good knife. It weighs nothing. Yeah, it's super thin. Super, super thin. Single deck. It's pretty cool. Four dollars. Good deal. Yeah. Uh, and the memory of finding it. Uh, so that that's about the Victorinoxes. Now, what I will move on is the the small size spider go knives. Um, first, well known, popular uh, dragonfly. It is a lock bag. It's a locking knife. Um, it is actually designed well enough that it will actually fill your entire hand when you use it. Uh, so it's, it is comfortable, uh, small distance blade, uh, locking knife, but I think it's like small enough and cute enough that for me it is a gentleman knife and or a knife that I don't plan to do work with but I still, I still want to have something with me. This is one of them. Uh, locking mechanism, mind you. So that is a Spyderco. Next one, Spyderco slip joint. Um, a bit heavy, all aluminum, uh, a bit heavy on the blade for this size and this purpose of knife, but it's a slip joint. Um, it's It's got the sheep foot uh, worn cliff blade, which I like. It's very functional for me. It's a very beautiful knife on its own and it's a very well-made slip joint. We'll talk soon enough about a good slip joint and a bad slip joint, but this is a good one and I like it. It's the Kiwi, it's non-locking. I believe there were earlier uh, versions of this that had a lockback design. Uh, this one doesn't. Um, I still like it. It could, uh, it could be a full flag ram very easily. I would much rather 
it had that. It's also an ADR13 MOV uh, playsteel, like the niches. Uh, it could be something better, but uh, so yes. this this used to be uh, probably a Japanese or U.S. made knife, and they offshored it to China and kind of chinsed out on the materials a little. It's right? possible. The earlier versions of the Kiwi had beautiful inlaid materials, like different stone, woods, whatever, mammoth, ivory, and there's a there's like a full collection of those Kiwis that you can have like 20, 25. Uh, very beautiful knives. Um, this is the, the leftover of that era, I guess. I don't know exactly what happened, but... Um, and that sucker is a two-hand opener, right? Yeah, you have to... This guy, you can actually open it one hand, and you can close it with one hand. Let's put it up here. This guy instead, the spring is so stiff, and there's not enough anything to purchase on the knife, that you struggle a lot with one hand. So you're much better to open it one hand, much better to close it two hands. So is, is one hand opening uh, a characteristic of gentleman folders? Not typically, because if you look at the Victorian Oxus, you have to use two hands and a nail. That's why I meant was two hands. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is so, characteristic, right? Typically, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So two hands, uh, two hands for this one. Now, another spider go, which is a very late acquisition for me, is the UK PK UK pen knife. Um, it's sub three inches blade, slightly, uh, but it is a nearly three inch blade. It's a full handle, very successful pocket clip, like on the uh, on the Sage and the Dragonfly. Uh, it's a slip joint, very stiff, very successful. It has a halfway stop right there, and then it closes. One hand opening, one hand closure. Uh, I really, I'm really, really happy with this knife and it's super light. Um, it feels like a hybrid between a gentleman and a work knife because it has a size of a work knife but it has the locking mechanism of a gentleman knife and the weight is super light. So it's somewhere in between. To me it's not working, it's gentleman likely. And finally, before we conclude this, the small version of an opener. Again, two hands to open, lock it, use it, two hands to close. Carbon steel, very light, very small, very traditional. Uh, two hands to open, so it's not super threatening. Uh, but uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? They're all nice knives, except for that one. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know, like, I own this knife, I own, you know, this and this, I own a variation of that, I've had this before. Um, I like the UKP, uh, okay, you know, like, um, it reminds me of different things. The blade shape reminds me of a stretch, which I've never owned, but I thought about, um, you know, the handle has excellent traction on it, really. Um, it's very, as close as you can get to a locking folder without actually being one. Um, I think that if you were to take this through like security or so on or whatever, if you compare this to like a Victorinox, mm -hmm. they would perceive this as harmless and this would be still perceived as harmful. Um, it, it still is. A it's a midpoint, let's say. It's a midpoint between a Tenacious, Delica, Endura and one of these guys, right? But it's large enough that it looks like a folder. Yes. You know what I mean? Like a real folder that could do harm to someone. Oh, it doesn't lock. Yes, that's a technicality, but the way that it looks overall is very right. similar. To and it. most people will not understand the difference in the mechanisms of a lock back versus a slip joint, but they will very easily understand size. That's they will, like, they that's will like see a hack or whatever. It's a big knife. Uh, they don't know what the slip joint is. But you know how they, they talk about like hacks, like in, in modern day society, that's like this verb. Oh, it's, it's a something hack, a growth hack. Like that's a fucking hack around like some sort of a law about locking knives. Um, yeah, Spyderco, was, Spyderco was super clever to design that. So people in Britain can carry that knife and still feel like they're carrying a real Spyderco. Um, yeah. But it's, it meets the definition of the law, right? Exactly. And they have the same thing aimed for the Danish or Denmark, yeah, Denmark uh, market where it has to be non-locking and two hands. So you cannot have a thumb hole for mm -hmm. that. You have to actually make a thumb hole 
ornamental, so it's just it's non-flexional, but it looks like a spider code, and then you have to use two hands to deploy it. Um, but I, I just like how can I say there is a place for tactical knives, there is a place for working knives, and there is a place for delicate, smaller, lighter gentleman knives. To me, this is one of them. Yes, it is one of the bigger ones in here, but it's still a slip joint, it's still light, it's still, you know, delicate. Uh, I just like it. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, now, one point, good slip joint, bad slip joint, this is a good one. You put your finger in the finger groove right here, and if this thing ever closes, it closes onto your index finger. Not to cut it, but to stop it. So, this, good slip joint. So is this one, good slip joint, finger groove. If this closes, it always goes onto your finger, no problem there. A bad slip joint is this. Right here, if this closes, a good portion of that is going to go onto my finger. So, I like Victoria Nasses, but I don't feel safe with them because they can close on your finger without a safety measure that you have in a spider code. So this is safe, this is smart, uh, this is not that smart, not that safe. So anyway, small comment. Gentlemen folders collection. Yep.